Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new on my channel, welcome. On my channel we make every week a garment uh, that we see in the shops and we make it from start to finish. So we make a pattern first and then we're going to sew it into a garment. And if you're a beginner, no worries, you can also do it even if you have never sewn before or made a pattern before. I explain you very thoroughly how you can do it and also beginners can work with us and make the whole tutorial. And if you are experienced, I get, have all tips and tricks uh, gathered during the many, many years that I am designing. So also for you, there will be lots of things that you can learn from. So very welcome on my channel and please subscribe if you like these kinds of videos. Uh, on this video, we're going to make this beautiful suit dress. And um, I really like how it looked. Uh, I have a uh, silk to make this for. It's rather thin, so I have to line it. But if you have a fabric that is more uh, thick or more sturdy or not see-through, then you don't have to line it. But I will have to because my silk is too uh, thin. Um, so I like the um, double-breasted one with the double buttons. Uh, I also, of course, like the lapels. Uh, I don't know if I make it that low because I don't really like that deep of a plunge neckline. So maybe I'm going to change that a little bit. Uh, I like the sleeves very much, but I want to make them three-quarter sleeves. So just below um, the elbows, I think. And maybe with the ruffle just be, be above the uh, elbow. Um, and then I make it a little bit longer because this is for me way too short. I like midi skirts, but for this dress, I think that's not a nice length. So I make it uh, to just above the knee. Um, and then uh, we will make some uh, darts in it. And I'll show you in the drawing how we're going to make the darts. So this is what I want to make in this tutorial. So I hope you like it. And let's go on to the drawing. So, and this is my drawing. So, what I'm gonna make, I'm not gonna make them till just above the knee. So, not that short as the painting uh, was. Well, my pencil is a drawing. Yeah, there, there's the knee. Um, I give it a little bit of a curve, but not too much because I want to make that curve by putting here uh, darts in the front and two long ones in the back. And the nice thing that I saw on the picture is they didn't make a dart that goes into nothing but they uh, made a sort of uh, a pleat that then has here um, I don't know how to call it but it, it's it's a dip where the uh, fabric comes together and not going on into into nothing so I, I'll show you when we make it but I thought it looked really nice here because then you have here some opening some movement of the fabric because it's not closed up and also here on top you have movement for your uh, breast so I think that looks really nice and we're not going to make it difficult in the pattern we're just going to do that on our body or on the mannequin if you have that and then you can just uh, just adjust it to your size uh, for the front and the back and what you can do if you um, do that uh, on the fabric you can replicate it to your basic pattern so if you want to do it again on another garment then you have that in your basic pattern or in the second basic pattern to use again and that is what I often do is when I make uh, some uh, adjustments to my basic pattern I make another basic pattern that has some adjustments and then you can choose from all of your basic patterns when you want to make something new and then you never have to make a whole sketch a whole pattern again so that's for the the bodice the sleeves I want to make sure the three quarter sleeves so the underarms are going out um, and I think I'll make it all just below the elbow and this ruffle I want just uh, on the uh, elbow I think this is nicest uh, we make lapels and everybody is very afraid of lapels but you see it's no problem at all it's just the normal closure with a collar uh, on top of it uh, it's really not difficult so don't be afraid you can do it also if you have never done it before and then the back well it's pretty straightforward just some darts here and yeah the, the sleeves of course are the same so this is what we're gonna make I have to line it um, I'm not sure yet how to line it it's a little bit depending on how much see through it is what I mostly like is to put the slip dress underneath uh, so just with, uh, say, a tank top um, uh, look, uh, I like that most. But if that's not possible, if it's too much see-through, then that is not nice because then you can see the tank top form underneath it. So then I will just line the whole uh, top part of the uh, of the dress for the front and for the back. 
uh, and I exclude the sleeves because that is not necessary. So I'll see how the fabric reacts, what I will do. So for the pattern, um, make sure you have the basic pattern that we made before. If you don't have it, I will link down below in the description box the tutorial how to make the basic pattern for the top. And we're going to use that. And what you do is first you trace out uh, that basic pattern that is this green line uh, on another piece of paper because we're going to make some adjustments to it. And when you have done that, um, what we're going to do is we're going to add 5 centimeters to the mid front. This is the mid front. And we need that because we want the uh, double breasted overlap in the front. So you add your 5 centimeters here to the mid front of the front pattern. Also what I did is I made the right length for my dress because the top, uh, the pattern of the top is for a top but it is the same for the dress so you make it just longer than normal. Uh, and then what I do is because I don't have a stretchy fabric and I want to be sure to have enough fabric and also because we're gonna make a dart here I'm gonna add two centimeters to the side seam. So you just mark it all the way down that you have extra fabric on the sides. This stays the same. Uh, the dart that we're gonna make here with the pleating, uh, we're gonna do that just when, when we put it on or when you put it on the mannequin, so we don't have to uh, mark that. The apex is also not necessary, so this is your front pattern. And the back is even easier, also trace that down from your basic pattern. And the only thing you have to do is you add 2 centimeters to your side seam for the same reason as for the front. And make sure your length is okay for your dress. So that is the front and the back. And then we'll go on with the collar. And now for the collar, I don't want to go too specific because normally I just uh, draw out by freehand a somewhat of a, a collar, but I want you to I want to teach you a little bit how you should do it. Uh, what you do is you extend the shoulder uh, line with uh, on a distance of two centimeters. You mark this point, and this point is on five centimeters. And then what you do is you uh, align this point with the height of the apex on the overlay, so on the, this is the mid front, but on the overlay and you connect that point of the two centimeters with this point in a straight line and then on five centimeters from this point you mark this point here on the top. Then perpendicular on this long line you mark the uh, horizontal line and that is your end here is two centimeters from this marking point and five centimeters to this side and then what you do is you uh, make a little bit of a curved line down to here the mid front part and this is your normal uh, uh, line of your front from your neck hole but you make this curve a little bit tighter so a little less than the curve of the front pattern so that you have to cinch it in a little to uh, attach this to this. Then you give this uh, also 4 or 5 centimeters as the um, curve of your color. And this gives you also a little bit of a curve that is way less than this one. Um, oh, and also um, this, um, this point here, the distance between this and this, is your total uh, neck width, so the width of this curve and the width of the back uh, neck hole, uh, that divided, uh, uh, divided through 6 plus 1. So my neck hole, the front and the back was 36, divided to, to 6, then I have 6 plus 1 is 7. So the distance from this marking point to this marking point is 7 centimeters. So then you have your collar almost like it should be, like a professional color. It should be a little bit more exact, but it doesn't really, you don't really have to do that. Uh, and of course, this is your mid-back, so this will be on the fold of your fabric. And then you have a really nice color for uh, a, a dress or 
a coat with the pals because then it's, it's most nicely but as I said I often just measure out how wide my neckline is and then I just draw a curve and you can do that too I just want to show you a little bit how it should be if you want to be more precise and if you really lost me by now with that color you can also just draw this kind of rectangle normally I only do it just simple like this you don't have to measure it out like I did uh, in the former clip just take a rectangle that has here the same width as your color has from the front to mid front to the shoulder plus the mid back to the shoulder so th those two together must be this width and this is how white you want your color to be I made it five now in this case um, and then you make this just this shape and what you can do is give this a centimeter extra because then you have just a little bit more uh, room for the fabric to fold over you don't have to do that but then it falls more nicely so just measure this this measurement is important that it fits into your collar and this is how white your collar will uh, must be so if you didn't understand what I just draw just make this part and then for the sleeve I want it to be a sleeve with a hat uh, because then you get that nice suit like um, fall of your sleeve so I measured how uh, long I want it I want it to be just below my um, elbow so for me that is 30 centimeters and I measured where I want to have it sit under my arm and that is for me 15 centimeters for the head that I need um, and then what I did I measured uh, how wide my uh, front and back uh, armholes are and they are 25 so what I normally do if I don't want to really make um, a coat sleeve or something I just take my measuring tape I see where it's 25 and I lay that down in a nice with a nice curve is there I think and then I just trace that with my marker and it, it doesn't have to be really precise it's just that you have a nice curve to uh, put your uh, sleeve in uh, then I wanted the sleeve to go a little bit out on the bottom so I made a little bit of a curve I measured how wide I want my sleeve uh, on the end and that is for me 45 centimeters so I went from this point down to that 45 centimeter mark and uh, then I always make a half then I fold my fabric my paper double and I trace the other side exactly like this one then you have a really symmetrical sleeve so this will be my sleeve the ruffle that we're gonna sew on will be just um, a strip of fabric gathered together so we don't have to make a, a pattern for that so this is the sleeve and if you don't know what I mean when I say measure how wide your armhole is what you do is you just take your measuring tape this is your armhole and what you do is you just lay it along that line and see how wide that is and this is the, the back part same for the front part just place your measure tape around that line and also for the uh, neck hole it's exactly the same you need your front and your back so your front part is here 11 centimeters and your back part is here 7 centimeters so that's how you measure how wide here your collar would be or for the sleeve how wide the head of your sleeve should be just taking your measure tape and hold it against the line so and besides the patterns that we made I also made the pattern for the facing so this is the front I made here the line for the facing so this part will be the facing so I cut it out twice and I ironed some interfacing on top of it so that it is a little bit more stiff and a little bit more uh, structured and for the back it is just this back part that you need to uh, cut out as an extra facing on the fold of course so then you get this part and also give that some reinforcement by some interfacing and then you have this part here so cut that extra besides the patterns you already had so I put my cutting mat underneath it so it's better to see because all the white on white is not very clear what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew first the shawl, both the shoulder seams and both the side seams uh, and uh, then I'll come back for the next step
Okay, so what I did, I tried the dress on to see how it fitted. And uh, I saw that I had to make some adjustments here uh, on the, under the arm because this was really standing uh, out. So I have to take this in a little bit under the arm, so about two centimeters for me. So see if you have to do that too. Uh, it is because this fabric is very uh, thin and flowy that I don't need that extra room here underneath my arm. So for the, both the sides I have to do that. Also the shoulders were a bit too um, far over the shoulder for me. So there also I've got to cut off uh, two, well, one and a half centimeters. I need some seam allowance too here. But also here I had too much um, fabric uh, over the shoulder hanging to put my uh, sleeve in. So that's just the adjustments. Then what I did, I put it on inside out. I pinned the overlap the way it should be. So with that five centimeter overlap. And then I pinned uh, down the um, darts. Well, it will not be really darts, but like darts. So what I do then is I, when I have it on, uh, wrong side out, I pinch here at the waist and I put a pin. And I did it about uh, two centimeters from the fold. I always just try, try how much fabric I have to make a dart so you can do it less or more. Just try out when you pinch it in on both sides when it's get, getting fit, uh, fitting nicely uh, around the waist. So I pinned it in, um, I think that is 15 centimeters or so. No, it's 12, 13 centimeters from the waist, one up and one down. Uh, and because I don't want to be this a dart that's going into nothing, I'm going to sew this water in a straight line. Just a little bit going in on the top and on the bottom, but just leaving that gap. So make sure you backstitch very well at the beginning and at the end. And exactly the same I did on the other side. And it's 10 centimeters from the side seam that I made these, uh, well, we will call it darts. And then the same I did uh, on the back, and that's a bit di more difficult when you have to do it on yourself. But what I normally do is I just pin the um, pin uh, around on the waistline, and then see uh, how far down and up I want to go. Usually I do a pin horizontally, then I take it down to my table, and then I pin it down to those ends and those start moments. And here I really make a dart, so going into nothing as we have done before. Uh, and this is, I think, five centimeters from the mid-back, six centimeters from the mid-back. So 13 centimeters like this, six centimeters from the mid-back. We're gonna sew this in, <clears throat> and then we're gonna sew those darts in the uh, front part. I'll make my adjustments. Um, and then when, what I do is I um, cut out a ruffle for the sleeve, and I decided where I wanted to sit my ruffle on my sleeve so I measured how where I want the ruffle to be and then how wide my um, sleeve is there so I want it just between <coughs> the uh, side seam and the head of the sleeve so just about here then it is 42 centimeters and I made this ruffle one and a half times that so that I can uh, ruffle, gather it in on the top and have a little bit of a ruffle on the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew when we've done the dress part. Then we're going to hem the sleeve and we're going to hem the bottom of the ruffle. Then we're going to gather in, gather it, gather in the top of the ruffle, and we do that by doing two uh, uh, two lines of uh, basting stitch on the widest stitch that you have, so that we can gather it in. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm trying a different angle now to see if you can maybe better see now what I'm doing when I'm sewing. Um, and what I will advise you when you are going to sew such a delicate fabric as silk or a very thin chiffon, uh, always take a new needle uh, to make sure that it's really sharp, otherwise you can get uh, uh, tracks on the, on the fabric. So always switch to a new needle when you start. And we're going to make now this uh, dart. And we're gonna um, uh, stitch back on the end and in the beginning, what we normally not do with a dart, but we do it now because this is just ending just in the middle of the fabric and not um, going into uh, into nothing as a normal dart. So back stitch a few stitches, and then. Uh, 
go all the way to the end. I must say I never use these clips for sewing but I, with this fabric I like it very much because the pins, I uh, noticed that my pins aren't sharp anymore so it's very difficult to get through this very delicate fabric and now with these clips it works very nice so I think I just have to switch over to using these more because I think it's very good invention. Uh, So I ruffled in here the side that I made the uh, gatherings and I pinned it on the sleeve on the right side with the right sides together of the ruffle and I'm going to sew that around 10 centimeters from the seam of the sleeve and then when I've sewn that down you're going to flip that back to the bottom and I think I'll just uh, iron this down. I don't think it's nice when you uh, stay top stitch it. So I think I'll just iron it down. And then when I close the um, sleeve, the underarm part, I will sew the ruffle also uh, attached. Because then you don't have this um, fluffing, I don't know the English word, underneath your arm. Because that doesn't feel nice I think when this is loose. So. Uh, you could uh, attach these two and just leave it loose, but I think I will just sew it down when I close the side seam of the um, sleeve. So I'm going to do that, then I'll do my other sleeve and then we're going to put the sleeve into the dress. I have finished my sleeves and they look, look very nice with the ruffle on top of it um, and now what I want to do is I um, go on with the lining for the dress because um, I, I was planning to do just a slip dress underneath but it, the fabric is way too thin and way too much see-through that it also wouldn't be nice with a slip dress because then you would see the slip dress through the fabric and also that is not very nice so I decided to line it totally uh, only not the uh, sleeves but the front and the back um, so what I did I already had these uh, facing parts that is a part of the pattern so the rest that I is this part on this side of the red line so this part I'm gonna cut out out of the lining fabric and I'm gonna sew that 
onto the facing parts and then I have my whole front pattern again as a whole and for the back I'm just gonna cut out uh, the whole back pattern and the facing that I already made gonna, gonna sew that on top of that and then I have my whole back pattern and then I'm gonna sew them together just as the rest of the dress uh, and I'm gonna sew that um, uh, to the dress uh, around the armholes and that's why I want to do that now uh, because now we're gonna sew in the sleeves and then I can sew on the uh, lining together with the sleeves so we're gonna make that uh, I'm not gonna for totally um, film that because uh, most of you won't line it and if you want then I have other videos how, where you can see how to make a lining but I don't think it's, uh, it's necessary for this video so I'm gonna make my lining and then uh, I'll come back to show you how I put uh, how we put on the sleeves now we're gonna put our sleeves in the dress and mark where the mid is, the shoulder mid of your sleeve by just folding it together. Here is the seam and place a pin on the top and then align the top with the shoulder seam of the dress and then put the sleeve into the dress so that you have the right sides together. Put that pin together with the shoulder seam pin them down and then align the sleeve seam together with the side seam so that's the other side of the hole And then you can pin the whole seam all around in the armhole. It's very slippery this silk. And I just pinched my finger so I must not get blood on my silk. So then you pin this all around in the armhole so that it is nicely fitted in the hole. I just tried the dress on to see if the sleeves were okay and especially the shoulders and that's what I do frequently just try it on to see if you have to adjust something and I thought well I show you this the color is not yet on and I know a lot of people are afraid to make lapels um, and well I must say the pieces that are here on already are just part of the uh, front pattern are the lapels but if you are afraid to uh, make the color on top of it that you have the really lapels with the V here in front uh, which is not a problem because I will show you it's not a problem but you could also stop here well not stop here but <laughs> not put the color on and just have the lapels like this and now it's white it's not good to see but you, then you have this as your front piece and I think that looks very nice too so you don't have to put the color on if you don't want you can also do it like this and just uh, sew on the facing around the front seam and then also you have a really really nice dress and I think it's turning out really nice I'm gonna put on the color also to show you how easy it is to make lapels because it's really not a problem at all when you do it like the way I do it uh, and then I think it looks even more nice but you could also do it like this that's why I wanted to show you how it looks like now So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew the two parts of the collar together and make sure you give them both uh, some reinforcement uh, that you can iron on or whatever you have that it has a little bit more uh, structure and then you sew them together along the top part not the bottom part so you leave the bottom part open so this you don't sew it's just around the top and then for the facings I have my lining already sewn on so I folded it a bit down to have the same that you have and you're gonna sew the shoulder seams together with the back facing and here also I have my facing sewn on already so you have only do I have that in frame 
almost. You have only this part, I have this whole back part also, but so the, the shoulder seems to become sewed so together. So you put them on top of each other, you um, pin them and you sew them together. And then your part is done. I have to do my side seams and so too, but I leave that out because uh, I'm not about the lining now. So do that and I'll come back for the rest. good way when you want to make the color edges really nice and neat is to uh, cut it off the seam allowance as much as you can and cut off the corners uh, straight as you saw me doing uh, just now and then you put out the corners really nicely with a scissors or a pencil or whatever it doesn't matter what as long as you get the corners really nice and sharp uh, out and then what I always do first is I first uh, iron this seam flat before I fold them together my experience is that it's then easier to um, get the seams really nice and flat here because then you have it opened up and then you can fold it down very nice and neat Also, the side corners are always very important to make them really nice and crisp. Like that. So now we're gonna put all the things together. Uh, and I know the experience ones uh, among, among you uh, we'll say well this is not the proper way to make lapels on uh, a blazer or on a dress or whatever uh, I know I have heard that it should be done differently but I never had any sewing classes I made my own um, processes and I think this is a way better uh, way to make lapels um, than the, 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 the way they teach you in sewing class because then you have always problems with the curves of the V uh, between the lapel and the uh, collar and in my way you don't have that there's no problem at all you have always very nice and crisp corners and that's why I teach you this way to make lapels and uh, as I uh, say every time don't be afraid to make lapels it is no problem at all it's not even difficult you just sew things together as you always do and the way they teach you in sewing class is very difficult it's very problematic it's often you have uh, problems with the corners I tried it once and I never do it again because it is awful so I teach you now how you can do it without any problems and what you do is you lay your three parts together so you have your uh, facing mark where your mid back is is that my mid back I think that's not my mid back because then I have my um, tag sewed on wrong well not in the mid okay I have to do that again this is my mid back then you lay on top of that the mid back of your collar and then the mid back of your dress and it is all right sides together and search for your color what is the nicest side and the nicest side you put down so the nicest side goes on top of the good side of your uh, facing and then when you have all the mid backs together then you pin them and from there you go all the way around to well to the bottom seam that's where we're gonna end so make sure here your um, uh, shoulder seams go together 
I put a pin in between first to make sure that all the layers are nicely attached, that I don't get one peeking out somewhere. So make sure you put your pins, enough pins, so that you don't miss out on some layers anywhere. So the shoulder seams together. Then we have a little bit of color left. So we're gonna align that. What you also can do is first pin the color. Really bad pins. I need to invest in some new pins because they're not really sharp enough for this fabric. And then you put your um, uh, dress on top of that and put another pin. Then you're sure that your color is on the white spot and not picking out or something. This is the end of the color. Then we go on with the facing and the dress part. And then we have the point of the lapel. And then we're going down all the way to the bottom. This whole piece, you pin that down and then the same for the other side. And then you're going to sew that whole piece all the way around from one side to the other. And then you have your uh, facing attached to your dress with the color in between. you should have something like this. Your collar is in between the facing and the dress and when you flip that over, when you fold the collar and you flip the lapels over, then you have this beautiful blazer like lapels. Very easy to do, no problem at all. So what we're going to do now is you should uh, clip these corners the same as uh, for the collar that you can nicely push them out. Uh, I'm going to steam this uh, side here, this, this seam from the front, the mid front, that is really nice and, and crisp as the collar is for both sides. Um, because I have lining, I have to hem the lining and I have to hem um, the dress. So what I do is, um, you can do that too if you like. I like to uh, sew the facing onto the dress, right sides together. So this is the wrong sides together. When you flip that over, then you can sew your facing. It's a bit hard to, to show you because I have this lining on, uh, on that. Then you can sew your facing down. And then you can, when you put that right sides together, then you have the part where the facing is nicely hemmed already because then you have around the facing you have it like this and then you only have to hem the rest of the dress all the way around so that's what i'm gonna do too um and then i have to hem the the lining also so i'm not going to show you that but when you want a really nice a crisp uh, hem here with the facing just fold it right sides together sew it till the end of the facing and then do the rest of the hem just normally and then give that also a, a nice press that's really nice and crisp although this is a very uh, thin fabric also a really good steam makes a whole difference so do that for, do that certainly don't forget um, and then we have, what we do is we're gonna make the buttons um, and we do double breasted so uh, I always have to think what side is over for women it is right over left so um, I try it on I'll see where I want to put the buttons I try to do it two on the waist and two just a little bit below 
Um, I must see how open this falls. When this is too much open, then I maybe put them higher. But I want to try to put them on the um, uh, waistline. So uh, make your buttonholes, measure out where you need to have the buttons. And then make your buttonholes and sew on your buttons. Uh, I have never done a tutorial about buttonholes because I think it's no use because all sewing machines are different and mine isn't yours so when I do a tutorial you won't understand when your machine is different. So I'm just going to do that and show you the end result. If you want me to make a, a tutorial of how to make buttonholes let me know uh, in the comment section and I will do one. But I think when you have a sewing machine you have the instructions that sh tells you very clearly how to do it because it's not difficult. You just have to know how your machine works. So make two buttonholes, two buttonholes, sew your buttons on and then your dress is done and I think it will be very nice. And here is the dress. It took me two weeks. I'm sorry that I couldn't upload now last week because I had two really rough weeks and I couldn't finish the dress and the video. But now it is finished and I really like how it turned out. I was pretty sad that I had to line it fully because now I don't feel the silk on my skin because it has a lining the whole front and the whole back, just not the sleeves. And it's just that nice when you have silk that you can feel it on your skin. But it doesn't matter. It looks nice now and I didn't like it when you see the a slip dress underneath. It will take hold, the whole look away when you have that. So I decided to just totally uh, line it. And I think it looks really nice. Now I'm doubting if I'm gonna make it a little bit tighter because I have some room here. Water, water some room. But um, it's, it's a very light dress so it's very nice when it's hot weather to wear this. And I think when it's too tight then you get too sweaty or you don't feel comfortable so i think i won't take it in it's just a bit loose now and i think that feels more comfortable than when it's really tight fitted i really like how these uh, darts that were not darts uh, turned out the dip here and here looks really nice and different than a really normal dart and at the back of course it's just nicely uh, hugging the the back maybe put my hair away that you can see in the mirror it is nicely Go following the body and it looks very nice I think. I'm glad with the sleeves with the ruffle. I was doubting if I put the ruffle higher but I think this looks very nice. Now it has you see the bottom of the sleeve underneath the ruffle and I think it looks really nice. I uh, taped it down here because I'm not really off this sponge thing going on um, but I, I'm not sure maybe I'll just wear a camisole underneath it. Uh, because I always feel too uh, nude when this is that wide open. But because it was the pattern and the design, I decided to put the buttons here and not higher up because this looks really nice. It's just at waist and I think that looks the nicest and you can always put something underneath it if you don't want it that, uh, that nude. But I, um, I like the design, I like how it turned out. Uh, I like the things that we tried out with the doors, as I said, with the ruffles. And uh, as you saw, the lapels, lapels, I'm always struggling with that. It's a strange word, I think. It was pretty easy, as you saw. It is pretty simple when you do it like this. You don't have problems with these curves that you have when you do it like you should do it. I never do it like this. This never gives a problem. This is always right. And it is always nice and clean and neat. And that's what I want. I hate it when this this curve or this, this um, point is not really straight or or neat and it's it's a, it's a pain when it's not nice so just do it like this there's no problem at all so i hope you like this tutorial please subscribe if you do um oh i forgot to pick the fabric for the next tutorial uh, well i can tell you it's a really uh colorful one it's not the white and the light pinks as i usually do so it's a very colorful one for the next tutorial and um well then i'll tell you i will make a dress out of it oh wonder a dress Almost always a dress, but there will be other things coming too. But next thing will be a dress and a colorful one. So I hope you like it. Please subscribe if you like my videos. Lots to come. And uh, I'll see you next week, I hope. Bye. Thanks for watching.